Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a radical equation. We have the fourth root of x plus 15 equals the cube root of x plus 1 and we're looking for x values. So, in a radical equation a lot of times we try to get rid of the radicals and we want to raise both sides to a power. So for example here, I can just go ahead and raise this to the fourth power that would get rid of the radicals on the left hand side but on the right hand side things aren't that nice because we have the cube root and now raise it to the fourth power, it's going to create more problems. So this is not a good method for this problem. So let's go ahead and do something else. So to solve this problem, I know at this point, you probably noticed that we can guess and check our way into this, right? You found a solution. I'm not going to mention that. We'll talk about that later. But here's what I'd like to do. I want to use my superpowers and that's called substitution. How does substitution work? Well, I'm going to call this A and I'm going to call this B. All right, so how do we proceed? Well, here I get a simple equation. A equals B plus one, nice. But that's not the end of it. We get more information. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. What do we get? Well, the first one gives us the fourth root of X plus 15 is equal to A. So if I raise both sides to the fourth power, then I should be getting something like X plus 15 equals a to the fourth power. Great. Now what else can I do? Well, the second one gives me cube root of x equals b. And if I cube both sides, I get x equals b cubed. So these two equations, basically we were able to get rid of the radicals by using these two equations. But now we have three variables. We also need to get rid of x. How do we get rid of x? Well, if you look at these two equations here, Notice that the bottom one gives you x equals b cubed. So in the top one, you can just go ahead and replace x with b cubed from here. And then that way you'll get rid of x. Let's go ahead and do it. Replace x with b cubed. So we get b cubed plus 15 is a to the fourth power. Now, we got a system of equations here instead of an equation, but this is not radical anymore, right? So how do we solve this? We can just go ahead and use our superpowers again, which is substitution. Let's go ahead and use substitution and using the top equation it, and, and in the bottom one, let's go ahead and replace a with b plus one. So we're gonna be getting something like this. b cubed plus 15 is equal to a to the fourth and replace a with b plus one. So we get b plus one to the power four. Okay, now the right hand side is binomial theorem. So let's go ahead and expand it. Remember the Pascal's triangle, fourth row, the coefficients are one, four, six, four, one. So the right hand side, which I'm gonna write on the left hand side, so the right hand side becomes the left hand side and the left hand side becomes the right hand side. So that way we're gonna get something like this. B to the fourth plus four B cubed plus six B squared plus four B plus one is equal to B cubed plus 15. Now I want to write this in standard form. Let's go ahead and put everything on the left hand side so that we get b to the fourth power. Now 4b cubed minus b cubed is going to be 3b cubed plus 6b squared plus 4b. 1 minus 15 is negative 14. Now one of the things that we've been talking about when we did equations on radicals or polynomials is what? Remember that? checking the sum of the coefficients. Why? Because if the sum of the coefficients of a polynomial is zero, then one is a solution. We talked about it before, didn't we? So let's go ahead and check that out. One plus three plus six plus four. Oh, come on, we know that it's gonna work, right? Otherwise, why would I mention it? Anyway, so you get the idea here, four plus six plus four. Okay, that's 14 minus 14, which is equal to zero. What is that supposed to mean? Well, this means that b equals one is a solution, okay? Well, what is that supposed to mean? Well, if b equals one is a solution, then from here we get that b minus one is a factor. Great. So now that gives me good information. Now I have a cortic that I need to work on, right? So this is my cortic that I'll be working on. And I found one of the factors of it, which means that I can reduce the degree to a cubic, which is not super good, but at least it's better than a cortic because like if you're trying to solve a cortic, what would you do? Like use the cortic formula? Is there a cortic formula? There is, yes, but 
come on, even the cubic formula is so complicated. I don't think you want to get into the quartic formula. That's way too complicated. So let's do it in a nicer way. So we know that b equals 1 is a solution. So let's go ahead and factor this expression. So I'm going to work off of this one. How do I manipulate it so that b minus 1 is always a factor? So this is what I'm supposed to do. Start with b to the fourth power and then subtract b cubed from it. So notice that b minus 1 is a factor. But I have 3 b cubed, so I have to add 4 b cubed. That means I need to subtract 4b squared, but I have 6b squared, so I need to add 10b squared. Then I need to subtract 10b to make it b minus 1. You know, and then but I have 4b, so I need to add 14b, and I end up with subtracting 14, which balances out and everything looks good. Right? Okay. Now, this equation is factorable by grouping, of course, so I'm gonna be splitting it up into groups of two and then factor each one. So we know that b minus 1 is going to be a factor, but this just verifies it. b cubed times b minus 1, and then plus 4b squared times b minus 1, and then 10b, 2b, I should put a 2b there so I can make the joke like 2b or not 2b, but anyways, 10b multiplied by b minus 1, plus finally 14 times b minus 1, and the whole thing equals 0. Okay, notice that b minus 1 popped up everywhere. Okay, that was expected because we knew that b minus 1 is a factor because b equals 1 is a solution. All right, so let's go ahead and factor out b minus 1 so that we can get our cubic. And our cubic is going to look like this. b cubed plus 4b squared plus 10b plus 14 is equal to 0. Now, we got rid of the uh, linear factor, at least we know that b equals 1, but the other is cubic. So how do you solve a cubic equation? Well, there's a cubic formula, but again, I don't think you want to get into this, but there's no other way, obviously. You have to use the Cardano's method, or actually there's another way to do this, and that's called Wolfram Alpha. Isn't that a beautiful tool? If you just enter this equation into Wolfram Alpha, maybe I'll, I'm going to include the link in the description so that you can check it out yourself too. But anyways, this equation gives us b equals 1, obviously, and another solution, which can be written as follows. b equals 1 over 3 times the quantity negative 4 minus 14 over the cube root of 3 times the square root of 897 minus 73, such a nice number, right? Plus the cube root of the cube root of the same expression, 3 times the square root of 897 minus 73. And this is the other solution. What about the other two solutions? Because this is a cubic, come on. Well, unfortunately, I know this is bad news, but the other solutions are complex. Sorry about that. And you might be wondering, like, why don't we solve for complex solutions, right? Well, I don't think you want to use this existing real solution to go into complex solutions because that would be real complicated. Anyways, so we know that there's a real solution and there are two real solutions. The other solutions are complex because this was a quartic, remember? Well, these are solutions, but not solutions. Why? Well, what is that supposed to mean? Well, it means that we haven't found X yet, right? Well, it's easy to find, though, because x is equal to b cubed, right? So x is equal to b cubed. Therefore, from here, one of the x values is going to be 1, which is nice. The other value is not going to be that nice, unfortunately. The other x value is just going to be this quantity here, one third multiplied by, you know, all that blah, 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 cube root of this, 8, 97. I can't even write it, OK? plus the cube root of 3 times the square root of 897 minus 73. And of course, this is just our b value. And what you're supposed to do is take that and cube it so that you can get the solution. All right. So that gives us basically two solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Tomorrow, I'll see you with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.